Welcome back to the Court EM Podcast. Core content for anyone, anywhere, and just in time. This is the official podcast of the NYU Bellevue EM Residency Program. This week's podcast is going to focus on a rare diagnosis, but one I think we're going to start seeing more and more. That diagnosis is baclofen withdrawal. Let's start by talking about what baclofen is, what its effects are, and where it's used. A baclofen is a CNS depressant that's derived from GABA, and thus it works as a GABA receptor agonist. The biggest use of this drug is in the treatment of spasticity, particularly in cerebral palsy and multiple sclerosis. More recently, the drug has been investigated as a treatment for alcoholism and alcohol withdrawal, but I want to focus on its role in the treatment of spasticity since that's probably where we're going to see this more. Patients who suffer from spasticity will often use this drug via an intrathecal pump. Basically, a catheter is placed into the CSF. That catheter is connected to a pump that is placed subcutaneously, usually in the lower abdominal wall. The pump has a reservoir of medication, and it's going to infuse that medication into the CSF. These pumps have a number of treatment advantages, the biggest of which is obtaining symptom control with very small doses of medication with minimal systemic effects. For instance, with increasing oral baclofen doses, you're going to see quite a bit of sedation with patients, and the intrathecal pump gets around that particular problem. Now, this all seems pretty great, and it is until the pump malfunctions. This can occur if there's a mechanical obstruction, so if the catheter becomes dislodged or it migrates from the pump or becomes kinked, if there's a medication issue, so the reservoir becomes exhausted or is improperly filled, or if there's a malfunction with the pump itself. In the setting of some sort of issue leading to decreased or lack of baclofen delivery, what happens to the patient? Typically, withdrawal will set in around 24 to 48 hours after reduction or absence of drug delivery. Initially, the patient can just experience increased spasticity and pain, but as the withdrawal continues, the patient can experience hemodynamic instability, hyper or hypotension, tachycardia, there can be confusion, altered mental status, and seizures. The increased spasticity itself can lead to hyperthermia and rhabdomyolysis and renal failure. In prolonged, untreated withdrawal, patients can go into multi-system organ dysfunction or develop DIC. It can be difficult to diagnose baclofen withdrawal because it presents similarly to sepsis, elevated temperature, tachycardia, and low blood pressure, but it can also mimic alcohol withdrawal, confusion, seizures, tachycardia. While covering the patient broadly with antibiotics and giving them fluids are probably reasonable interventions, it's not going to fix the issue. So the first big issue is making the diagnosis. What's going to tip us off? The key is knowing that the patient has one of these devices implanted. If they do and present with any mix of the above symptoms, we should suspect withdrawal and pump malfunction. In fact, if the patient has an intrathecal baclofen pump and they present sick in any way, it should at least enter our mind as a possibility. And once we've thought about the diagnosis, we've got to make the diagnosis. Imaging can help here. A KUB x-ray can be done quickly and can often tell you if the catheter has become dislodged, kinked, or migrated. A CT scan of the abdomen can give you a lot more information about the catheter as well, and it can give you information about where the pump is sitting. Additionally, you can have the pump interrogated to see if it's functioning. This is typically going to be done by either a neurosurgeon or an interventional pain specialist, depending on your hospital and who placed the device to begin with. Ultimately, the diagnosis is going to be made on clinical grounds, but all these adjuncts can definitely help. Let's go on now to treatment. I've got the patient whom I suspect or have confirmed baclofen withdrawal. What do I do to start treating them? As always, we're going to start with supportive care, IV, oxygen if needed, and fluids. Aggressively cool patients if they're hyperthermic, as this can cause significant morbidity and mortality. The best directed treatment, obviously, is to get them back their baclofen. The issue, though, is that patients on intrathecal infusions need the baclofen to get into the CSF in order to relieve the withdrawal. You'd have to give them large systemic doses to even have a shot at doing this. So if the starting dose of oral baclofen is somewhere in the 5 to 10 milligram range, you may have to give 5 or 10 fold more orally to get any into the CSF. All right, so oral baclofen is out from a practical standpoint. What else can I do? These patients can present similarly to alcohol withdrawal, and so we can treat them with escalating doses of benzodiazepines, which may help to control the symptoms. Again, you may need very high doses in order to have any effect. Other medications that have been used include dantrolene and tizanidine, but these have really only been looked at in case reports and case series. Propofol infusions have also been used successfully. 
In severe cases of baclofen withdrawal, you can administer the baclofen via a lumbar puncture, but this has some problems. First of all, it's going to wear off and it's going to need repeat dosing. You're not going to keep placing a lumbar puncture needle into the patient's back. Additionally, you're going to have to avoid the catheter that's in there unless it's pulled completely out of the CSF. And that may not be that easy, even if you had fluoroscopy. Now, a neurosurgeon or interventional pain specialist can also access the catheter via side port and deliver baclofen into the CSF, but that's really only going to work if the catheter is in the proper location, but the device itself is malfunctioning. So unless the problem is simply that the medication reservoir is empty, these patients are ultimately going to need a surgical intervention to either replace the defective pump or fix the catheter. So you're going to have to get your consultants on board early and figure out if you need to transfer them, where you're going to transfer them to. All right, let's hit some take home points. Baclofen withdrawal is a rare complication of intrathecal baclofen pumps. Its presentation mimics sepsis and alcohol withdrawal, and it's characterized by hemodynamic instability, hyperthermia, increased spasticity, confusion, altered mental status, and seizures. Patients can develop rhabdo from the spasticity and eventually can develop multi-system organ dysfunction. Number two, treating baclofen withdrawal with oral baclofen is unlikely to work even at large oral doses because only a tiny amount is going to get into the CSF where it needs to act for withdrawal to be treated. And then finally, number three, baclofen withdrawal can be emergently treated with increasing benzodiazepine doses, propofol infusions, and baclofen administered via a lumbar puncture. Ultimately, these patients are all going to need consultation with either a neurosurgeon or an interventional pain management specialist to interrogate the device and surgically correct the issue. We've got a couple of good links in the show notes to some additional information on this topic. The couple that I want to highlight is an MRAP piece from November 2015 with Michelle Lynn and Zlatan Korlik talking about these intrathecal pumps and the fact that they can have other drugs aside from baclofen. The other one I want to point out is by one of our toxicologists at Bellevue, Silas Smith, talking about baclofen pump complications. And this is a case report and an explanation of the pathophysiology and treatment that was in a free open access publication. And again, that link will be in the show notes. Well, that's all for the Core EM podcast this week. Come on over and check out the site at coreem.net, where we've got a ton of great core content emergency medicine. We'll have a post up on Wednesday and a journal update up on Thursday. Don't forget to check out our Facebook page, follow us on Google Plus, and on Twitter where our handle is at core underscore EM. Thanks, and see you all next week.